Hello everybody, my name is Inez. Welcome to today's video. Today I want to speak to you about walking through the fire and that the Lord is always with you no matter what you're going through. No matter what part or level you are in your journey walking with the Lord in this life, God is with you and I've just come here to remind you of this fact in Jesus name. So let's pray. So Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this word this day, Lord. Lead me and guide me. Speak to your people through me in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. I love you all. Thank you for all your love. So let's get to it. So the Lord has put this on my heart for those of you who are struggling at this time. You know, this is supposed to be the most amazing year, whether you know it or not. A time of growth a time of maturity, of flourishing. But sometimes people have to go through deep fire. And it's not that God has given trials. It's not that it's most of it is the enemy pushing because you're coming into greater things. Some are walking into their destinies and some the enemy is just absolutely pounding. But this is where you have to stand and stand strong in your fate. Because as you know by now, before there is victory, breakthrough, there's always a storm. There's always something right before you get this amazing blessing or you're reaching the next level. Coming to the land of milk flowing with honey. So you have to understand that as a Christian, you're going to go through some things. It's not always plain sailing. Things are going to happen, but you need to mature spiritually as well. And those who are not being attacked by the enemy, those who everything is absolutely fine all the time, there's something wrong with that. You will always go through something. So this comes to the point that I'm going to be speaking to you about today. God put on my heart the book of Joshua and all of the battles that he had to go through. If you read the book of Joshua yourself, it was one thing after another. So when Moses died, he took over. It's just like you. You could probably be the only Christian in your family, in your workplace, in your job, wherever you may be. But you're going through a lot of things and it's just a process, you know. But there's times you go through fire, but you see God is always there with you. And sometimes the enemy makes it out that, it, that God has left you. And you feel like you're by yourself. You feel like, where is everybody? Does God not see what I'm going through? Of course he does. But it's what you say in the midst of the fire. It's your character that's being tried, that's being tested. The inside, what's coming out? Does anything come out that's defiling? That's what has to be worked, is the heart. It's always a heart issue with Jesus. You see, a lot of times when people get saved, they can be in a church for 20 years, but they never change. They never grow. They're still the same or they get nastier. Because they haven't given their heart to the Lord. They don't fully know Jesus. They're not in the word of God. It's basically religion. It's not relationship anymore. But anyway, I feel like I'm going somewhere else with that. So you just need to search your heart. Big time. It's, it's all about the heart with Jesus. And he's always trying to better us. You know, it's obviously not works. But God is about the heart. So sometimes things get bubbled up as well. The, the pressure gets torn up. But you see, that's where God shapes and that's where God molds. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, if you've looked at the last videos I've put out there, because it's a testing time as well uh, with the people of God, even through the lockdowns, through everything that's going on and what the enemy is doing. But you see, God has been turning it around, but God has been doing the work in our hearts. If you've noticed that yourself or if things have been happening in your marriage or your family, or your workplace, or your ministry, you might notice that there's a lot of changes. But you see, you should be looking at yourself as well. But just say, for an example, if you're going through things, or if your business is not going so well, your family is turned upside down, you don't know what's happening in your marriage, you don't know what's next, you've lost your job. You're going through the fire. And it seems sometimes as if God is not there. It seems as if everybody has turned against you. It seems sometimes if you're by yourself. And we all go through moments like that. You know, we go through times of tears, happiness, joy, different seasons in your life. 
but especially when there's fire, when there's heat, you know, and it feels like there's pressure in your head, there's all these voices all over the place, you don't know what's going on. This is where you need to draw closer to Jesus. This is where you need to be focused on the Lord. But you need to remember as well in Colossians 2 15 what Jesus did on the cross. People seem to forget the cross, that it was all done and finished on the cross. And in Colossians 2 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphant over them. Totally disarmed. And sometimes people are like, oh, devils are attacking me. This is happening. Oh, I need help. Of course, we need prayer at times. Of course, we need people to cover us. But you need to understand that the word of God is powerful when the word comes out of your mouth. So we don't act in the flesh. We're not supposed to, but every single one of us do at times. But you need to understand that we need to move in the spirit. And people think that's all like floaty and woo. Walking in the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, self-control, all of these things. And walking in the flesh is all the other stuff. The things we say, the nasty things, the hatred, the meanness, all of these things are, are trying to get revenge back, you know. So you want to stay away from that stuff and stay strong and stand with your eyes focused on the Lord because the battle is already won, what Jesus did on the cross. So always remember the cross. And you stand up and say, look, I have power. I have authority. This thing's not going to happen. My marriage is not going to break up. My family's not going to break up. I will get another job. I will succeed. I am victorious. I am more than a conqueror. But you see, if you speak anything negative, and sometimes also people think, oh, that's not the gospel. You know, that's, that's all about self. It's not. It's who you are in Christ. It's you and Jesus. So that's why you need to know who you are. That's why you need to know your authority. And people don't understand that. They get too religious sometimes. They can't see that, you know. So let's get back to Joshua. So God had me reading this whole book again the other day. It was just so impressed on my heart, you know. And if you look and read it yourself, it he goes from one thing to another to another. And he gets heavy hearted at one point. I'll get into that now in a moment. But at the very start, when God is um, um, promoting Joshua, you could say, because Moses had died. And a lot of the time you hear God saying, you know, in the first book of Joshua, it will say, we'll go down to, uh, well, verse six. And he's saying, be strong of a good courage. And then move down to seven. Oh, be strong and courageous. Uh, observe to do all that's in the law and then it says have I not commanded you be strong and be, be of a good courage don't be afraid don't be dismayed don't be worried for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go and he goes on there you know and it's the same thing with Jesus Jesus is always saying don't be worrying don't be afraid where is your fate oh how long do I have to be with you do you remember he said this to the disciples he was walking with them for such a long time and they were even marveling sometimes saying, you know, Lord, I thought this. And he was like, how long have I been with you? Like, do you not know me by now? And some people, like I said at the start of this message, they feel that when they go through something that God is not there. I feel God's not answering my prayers. I pray and it feels like it's not going through the roof. I mean, who said that? God is inside of you. Holy Spirit's with you. He's walking with you. He's in you. So you just speak and he's right there. You know, it's not like you have to pray and pray and pray and pray till it goes through the roof, through the ceiling, to the second heaven. He's inside of you. You just need to speak the word and remember what Jesus said. Have you got faith? Will you have faith when I come back? Let your faith rise. So just like Joshua, he says, be strong, be courageous. There's a lot of different things that Joshua went through, but he also had to bring the people. You know, he was the leader. So just like I said, you can be the next deliverer in your family. Or you can change things in your workplace or in your ministry because the light of God is in you. God is inside of you and you can bring change to anything. Where there's, there's sorrow, where there's pain, where there's anger, where there's everything of darkness, you are light. So you could say something that could break that and shatter all the evil and all the darkness. You can be a peacemaker. You can be the one who brings joy 
where people are just down and out all the time or where somebody is constantly bitter. You just be led by the Spirit of God. So when there's fire, when everything is coming at you, you're going through a very, very difficult season um, in your life, whatever it is, or something traumatic, or maybe somebody has passed away and you don't know what's happening. You don't know where you're going next. You, you have no idea what to do, who to talk to. This is where you need to draw close to God and know that God is with you even more so in these times. And you're getting stronger, whether you know it or not, you are. So let me go to chapter 7 in Joshua. I think I actually mentioned this before as well, but it's what God is saying at this time for those who are struggling and finding it difficult and going through fire. So it was about um, uh, Joshua and in Jericho and men from Jericho to I. And there was a big battle going on and there was thousands of them coming after them. And it said in, say, sorry, this is chapter 7 in Joshua and, and verse 6. And Joshua rent his clothes. He fell to the earth upon the face upon the ark of the Lord until evening. And the elders of Israel, they put dust on their heads. And it says beforehand um, in verse 5, sorry, that the children of Israel, they were just so overwhelmed with all these men coming down here, attacking them, chasing after them, this another war that they were going through. So it said that the people, their hearts melted as water for fear. So they were afraid and they were going through, they thought that they should be in the land flowing with milk and honey. How was this happening again? But you see, Joshua was a warrior. Joshua was very strong. But this point, he literally nearly lost it. Have you ever gotten to that stage? And he literally fell on his knees and he's going along with the children of Israel, obviously. You can just picture this, right? So it's a constant battle, one after another. So sometimes that happens in our lives where you go through one thing, another thing. It's like boom, boom, boom. Everything's coming at you from each corner and you've no clue what to do. And there's all these other things, you know, there's rejection. There's, there's all these negative thoughts from the enemy. People are saying nasty things. You're being pushed out of something, whatever it is, or there's trauma or something has happened, you know, or you know that something has happened in your family, you know, you don't know how to deal with it, or terrible news or something, and it's just, you're all over the place. So there is a point in verse 10, when Joshua was just, he, he couldn't take it anymore. So he's on his face, and it says in verse 10, the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Get up, what are you lying on your face for? So he says this to Joshua, the warrior, the conqueror, the one who's leading the people, the deliverer, and he's, he's having a hard time and he's on his face saying, Lord, how is this happening? What are we gonna do? There's too much, the pressure. And God is saying, get up. Do you not know who you are? So it's the same as you and me. Sometimes you see, God will always bring a voice. He'll bring someone along to say, come on, you can do this, keep going. You just have to keep moving. Get up and don't give up. So let this be your word for today. You're not to give up. You are to keep pressing forward because you will come through this. You need to understand, God never leaves you. God never forsakes you. He's right there with you, telling you, let's go. You can't give up, not now, because you're almost there. So when there's fire, when there's pressure, when there's heat, you need to encourage yourself in the Lord and say, no, I'm not, I'm not listening to this anymore. I'm not. Now remember, you don't fight against flesh and blood, whatever it is that you are going through, but you need to keep going. You know, and sometimes it could be in your family or wherever you are. And you're the strong one there and everybody turns to you or in the ministry and everybody turns to you but you're finding it difficult and they're looking to you and you're like oh like joshua the leader on his face going what am i going to do what am i going to do look what's happening look who's coming against us lord help me and god is like get up now come on keep going you need to keep moving so that is your word for today in the midst of the fire get up because you are strong. Remember the spirit, self-control, long suffering. Yes, you can. You can actually get up and change the day. 
you can get up or you can have the duvet over you. You can be, oh, I can't, I can't. You can keep saying that, but then you can't, you won't. But if you just shake the dust off and say, no, listen, I'm moving on. I'm going to have a breakthrough in my business. I am going to go and get another job and support my family. I am not going to let this thing attack me, whatever it is that's coming against you. Or if there's a court case or whatever. You stand strong and know that God fights for you. So remember in Psalm 23, the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. He makes you lie down in green pastures. He leads you beside the still waters. He restores your soul. He leads you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. For God is with you. His rod, his staff, they comfort you. He prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. He anoints your head with oil. Your cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. You will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You need to understand this. You need to understand. You need to shake all that negativity off now. Because people don't want to hear that at this time. Okay. You go through difficult things. But sometimes if you look when God was speaking to his children. In the Bible. He would say what are you doing? Get up. What, remember Elijah. What are you doing here? Get back down there. Remember, Jezebel had pushed him to the edge and he was like, oh, my life is over. I might as well die having a pity party. And God is like, what are you doing? What are you doing here? You're needed back down there. Now go. And sometimes you need that tough word because if you're sitting there for a long time, days on end, weeks on end, oh, my life, I've lost everything. Having a pity party. Like I said, yes, we go through hard times traumatic times difficult times fire and it can be quite hard but there will be somebody there to say let's go you need to move now that's enough okay so we remember in the book of james and chapter one it's all about count it all joy do you actually be joyful and you say oh yes i'm going through fire i'm going through lots of pain right now well sometimes i don't because it can be difficult, it can be tough. So it says to count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith works patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. For he that wavers is like the wave of the sea, driven, tossed to and fro. So one minute you're okay, one minute you're a warrior, the next minute you're crying, the next minute you have, you have self-pity, one minute you're angry, you're all over the place. Let your faith rise. You need to move forward, you need to be strong and courageous in these times, okay? Let God do the work inside of you, but be strong and know that God is with you. And then in verse 12 in chapter 1, James, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to him that loves him. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. Because remember, the enemy is there and he's only there with the pressures. Right? But you have the word of God. You have God inside of you. You don't walk by sight. You don't look at all this going, ah! Because victory is yours. It's already done. You just need to stand and say, no, I am not accepting this. I am fighting for my marriage. My marriage will stay together. My family will stay together. I'm getting another job. This person will not push me out of this place. You know, so you're, you're speaking victory all the time. So it goes on there. I'll let you, you read James for yourself and the book of Joshua for yourself. And Psalm 23, but you need to believe these things. You know, you're not going along saying, I need prayer, I need prayer. This is where you need to grow. You need to be the answer for other people. You know, you could be forever learning as well, but actually not going out doing something. You could be the answer to somebody's prayers. You could be an encouraging word to somebody. You could be a helping hand where it's needed. You need to go. Okay, sometimes, you know, you need to come out of the, the diapers, the drinking of the bottle, and you need to grow up. Sometimes you need to 
get that hard word and you need to grow up and come out of the diapers and mature and keep going forward. It sounds tough, but at this time, God needs his army to rise up. We need to be there for each other. We don't need to be fighting each other. We don't need to be in fear because fear is under your feet. All of this stuff has been done on the cross. There's so many people, they need to hear the comforting words all the time, all the time. But then when there's words of, come on, let's go, let's move. You know who you are. God is inside of you. You know that you're loved. You're deeply loved. You're highly favoured. Now let's go. God needs you over here. He needs you in your family. He needs you to be strong for these people. Maybe he needs you to pray for certain people. Maybe you're the answer in your family or in your community and you have the answer right there inside of you. The most powerful, powerful thing here on this earth. The person, Holy Spirit, is inside of you. And he's right there and you have that power, you have that authority, you're already loved. So you need to stop listening to the lies of the enemy of, oh, you're this and you're this and you're this and you're this and you're like, oh, I need prayer, I need five people to pray for me every single week. No, you need to mature, you need to grow and you need to stand as the warrior that you are. And you need to understand that. And remember, there's no condemnation. There's only a person who can, con who can condemn you as you. By speaking and listening to negativity over yourself. Never mind if people are doing it. Let God deal with them. But you don't receive it. You receive the positive words that God has spoken over you. The word of life. Resurrection life. In Jesus name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So remember also you look to that cross. And you remember that it was all done and finished on the cross. So the enemy is not there to try and beat you, if you understand. He's already under your feet. It's only you if you give him access. If you say, okay, oh no, I'm all afraid now, and you open the door, you allow him then to trample, if you understand. That is why the weak Christians, the ones who are still in diapers, the ones who still are learning and learning and learning all the time and all the time, 10, 20 years later, and they're still like this, and they're all over the place because they don't want to submit under somebody, they don't want to be part of a, a group anywhere, or they're trying to be by themselves, or they're bitter and angry at something that happened to them. That's when it will happen. That's when all the wolves can attack them, and you won't know what to do. You need to stay with the people of God. You need to stay around the right people. And you see, God will always bring it. He will always bring you to the right people. It's just, are you there? Or have you gone away? Have you walked away? So you need to understand that. So in Psalm 28, 7, the Lord is your strength. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. He is your shield. Let your heart trust in him. He is your help. Therefore, let your heart exalt him and you will sing a new song to him. Walk in that relationship with Christ. You need to understand who you are. You need to know that you're a warrior, you're a conqueror, you're a son, you're a daughter of the Most High God, you're highly favoured. All the other voices and lies and the trauma, the things, the fire that's going on around you. Don't let it get to you. Don't let it inside. If you let it inside, you'll be defiled and you'll start speaking it. Just repent if you've done anything like that and start again. Remember, there is no um, uh, condemnation. In Daniel 3.25, remember, in the fire... In the furnace. I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, but they're not hurt. And the fourth one looks like the Son of God in the fire. So, when the hard times when you feel I'm not hearing God, I don't know what's happening, how come this person has left? How come my marriage is like this? My ministry is all over the place. I lost my business. I'm in debt. I lost my money. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> You don't need to stay like that. You need to move on. If there's a sickness, you need to stand on the word. You need to be speaking healing scriptures. You need to be saying, no, I am a child of the most high God or whoever it is. Or if you're praying for somebody, 
Stand in faith. You are not to give up. Don't speak doubt. Don't speak it. You need to stand and you need to be strong for other people. Because God is your strength. You need to understand that. Remember Jesus says, those who are weary, come to me. Give it all to me. Tell me. Speak to me. Give it to me. Don't carry it anymore. The amount of times Jesus says, where is your faith? Where is your faith? And sometimes when it gets heavy, when it gets so hard in the fire, it's only you. You can say, Lord, help me. Help me. And he's right there. He will help you. And you know that he's right there with you saying, come on, you need to get up now. Come on, let's do this together. In Matthew 6, 25, don't be anxious for anything. And remember, anything that's not faith is sin. We've all fallen into this where we're going along with the things that we see. And that's exactly what the devil does. And he puts all the pressures, he puts all this around you. You know, you feel like you're losing your mind half the time. But that is where you need to say, no, I am standing. I will not be moved in Jesus' name. And in Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Put it all to the Lord and he will direct your ways. He will direct your paths. He's your shield. He's your keeper. He's your stay. He's your provider. He is the resurrection. He can resurrect your marriage, your business. He can open a new door. All of a sudden you have a job there, a new income. You might have lost it all, but you see it's paving the way for something new. So this is exactly where you need to hang on. And you need to stand in faith, even in the midst of the storm. Peace in Jesus' name. You say peace to your family, peace to your body. If there's someone in your family who's sick, declare and decree the word of God over that person and stand in it. Don't waver, don't be tossed to and fro. You need to believe the word of God. Do you believe the word of God? Everything that Jesus said is truth. You just need to believe it and stand on it. So listen, brother and sister, the fire that you're going through, you are coming out. Remember, the storm always ceases. The enemy has to back off for a season because you're in a battle, whether you like it or not. And unfortunately, those who don't know Jesus, you see, things will happen. You know, people take their life. People murder each other. There's crazy things that are going on in the world because there's darkness because they don't know God but you know God and he knows you so he's standing there saying come to me come to me tell me I already know what's going on but you need to stand read my word what does my word say in the situation anything that you're going through it's in the word of God and once you give your prayer your supplications to God you leave it you don't go into the bed going, oh, what about this? How am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to do this? Oh no, I can't sleep. And all of a sudden it's four o'clock in the morning and you're still worried. Then you're taking tablets to stay awake during the day. Or you're self-medicating. This is obviously for somebody. Or you're going through something. You're, you're struggling with prescription drugs. Maybe you're drinking wine here and there because you're trying to do it yourself. Because if you're trying to do things yourself, it'll fail. That's why you need Christ. We are nothing without Jesus. So you need to stand on the word. It's not only a case of just saying, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I mean, there's, there's people out there who say they're Christians. And I know this. And they still go to psychics. They go to tarot read because they're looking for a word. They're looking for something. They're looking for an answer. And it's Jesus. Jesus Christ is the answer. He's already there. He's already inside of you. They just don't know him. And remember, the day that you stand before him, he'll say, Welcome, my son, my daughter, who I am well pleased. Or he'll say, I don't know you. And that's something I do not want to hear. So the people, you see, there's chaff and there's wheat. There's ones who say, yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. Mm. But they actually don't know God. They just say that they're Christians, but they don't know the word. They're not acting the word, they're not living the word, they're not believing the word, they're all over the place. And then you have Christians then who are still in the world, they never change. 
they've never given their heart to the Lord, they're still the same. And then of course there's the unbelievers, the ones who are totally in that world and who Jesus Christ is trying to reach. He doesn't want anybody to perish, nobody to perish. So he is extending his hand and everybody, everybody will hear about Jesus at some time. So it's up to them. Whether they believe all of this, the battle in their mind or what the enemy is trying to do, or they can come to Jesus. You can choose to come to him. He'll change your life around and you live for him. He will come and make his home inside of you and he will give you a brand new life if you just let him. But you need to understand the cross. You need to learn about the cross and what Jesus Christ has done for you. Don't Bible bash the people that are around you. Just tell them about Jesus and show them Jesus through the life that you live. Not in a Pharisee way. Not in I know it all and I'm puffed up. Show them the love of God. Give them a hug. Buy them groceries. Do something nice for people. The people out there are lost. All you need to do is look at the media. And killing each other. Crazy things. Attacking each other in ministries. Pulling each other down. The stabbings, the shootings, you can go on. It's all darkness. I don't even want to talk about that stuff, but it's there. These people need to see light. They need to see you with Jesus inside of you. So this is why this year you need to grow. You need to mature. You need to be the light. You need to get yourself together. Pull yourself up. No matter the hardships that you're going through. I have so many stuff going through myself. But I do not let it overtake me. Because I believe in the word of God, you see. And then God takes care of things. You need to understand that. So that's why you need to be strong. That's why we need to pray for each other. We need to be with each other. We need to take care of each other. Love each other. Are you okay? How's everything? Can I help you in any way? It's simple. But not let the darkness come anywhere near you. Because it can't. Only if you allow it. So give yourself fully to Jesus. If you're backslidden, if you're in your heart, if you're away, if, if you know you've been doing the wrong thing, lay it down. If there's any addiction that you're going through, it's already done on the cross. You have self-control inside of you. Just say, Jesus, take it away from me. Take it away from me. Your grace is sufficient for me. And you know, he's strong in your weakness. Just give it to the Lord. Because he loves you so much. You are so deeply loved. You need to understand that. So stop self-talking over yourself. I can even feel it. I know some of you are. You're self-negative talking over yourself. It needs to stop. Stops today after this. Because you belong to Jesus Christ. And there's things to do here. There's things to do here. On this earth. But you just need to believe this. So, Father, in Jesus Christ's name, Lord God Almighty, we thank you for this word today. Lord, we thank you that you're with us even in the fire. Lord, I speak peace to any situation right now. Lord, those who are weary, those who are down, those who are listening to the voices of death, Lord, I cancel it in Jesus' name. I cancel every voice of the enemy, Lord. I destroy every plot of the enemy, Lord, trying to drag your people down, Lord. I declare and decree that your children will rise up as warriors and be strong and brave and fearless and courageous, Lord. In your name, Jesus Christ, as warriors, just like Joshua, Lord, as he contained himself and encouraged himself in you, Lord, just like Jesus, and stood up strong and moved forward, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let your light shine so strong in your people right now, Lord, and that they feel your love right now, Lord. You're wrapping your arms around them, Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you for being with us. We give you glory, Lord. We give you praise. We honor you, almighty God. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for us on the cross. Thank you for your blood. Thank you that you disarmed the enemy. And thank you for your word, the authority that you've given us, almighty God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You are strong. You are courageous. You can do this, okay, because Jesus is inside of you. The Spirit of God is with you. Who dare rise against you because you belong to God? And nothing will hurt you. Nothing will any means hurt you in Jesus' name. I speak protection over you, peace over you. Lord, bring the provision that they need, Almighty God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now dance around. 
Give God praise. Give God all the glory that he deserves in Jesus' name. And smile, brothers and sisters. I love you all. God bless you.